Rear Window is a 1954 mystery thriller directed by Alfred Hitchcock starring James Stewart and Grace Kelly. As a wheelchair-bound photographer spies on his neighbors from his apartment window and becomes convinced one of them has committed murder. Universal presents this film on native 4K with HDR10. What is up everybody and welcome back to the Mid-Level Media channel, your hub for everything physical media and entertainment. I am Ken and I'm here today to review this classic Hitchcock film from 1954 Rear Window as a part of this Alfred Hitchcock collector set, 4K collection set. And I'm so excited to get into talking about this movie today with you guys because I've got I've got some thoughts about this movie. As you guys know, it is Alfred Hitchcock Month on the Mid-Level Media channel. If you want to take part in this event, if you're on YouTube, if you're on Instagram, go check out my Hitchcock kickoff video uh, where I laid out all of those details. But it is Hitchcock Month, a month of Hitchcock is the hashtag. So yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to get into more Hitchcock. And if this movie is any indication of, of what I'm going to be enjoying this month, I am in for an absolute treat. So before we get into this movie, talking about, we're going to break down the movie, then we're going to talk about the visual quality of the 4K. We're going to talk about the special features and you know, the packaging is the packaging that you've seen this unbox many times before. I don't really have to go into all that. But before we get into it, Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I would definitely appreciate that. If you like Blu-rays and 4K, if you like that kind of stuff, physical media, you'll like this channel. Hit the subscribe button. Also, be sure to like this video and comment down below. I want to know your thoughts. I want to know your thoughts on Rear Window. Turn on those bell notifications for all future videos. So let's get in uh, to this movie. And I have to say, overall, I was very, very impressed by this movie for it being such an iconic film and everybody talks about this movie as it being a huge inspiration on film and cinema in general. I vaguely remember seeing this when I was a kid. I know that I've seen parts of it like on TV. I just remember watching it uh, when I was a kid, but I remembered almost nothing about it. So this was pretty much like a first time watch for me and it is the last one in this 4K set uh, that I needed to watch. So I was glad to knock that off the list as well. So. I, I really enjoy this movie. I, it is definitely, to me, of the ones that I've seen, uh, top tier Hitchcock. It would probably make it into my top three up there with To Catch a Thief and Psycho. So it's definitely up there for me as far as Hitchcock uh, and his filmography. Let's see if it stays there when I get through some of these uh, some of these other classics that I have to go through. But yeah, we're just, well, look, we're going to give my raw thoughts here. I am not a film and cinema expert. I did not go to film school or anything like that. I am not a professional movie critics. So I feel like I have to say that before I dive into breaking down uh, a Hitchcock movie. It is definitely probably the most Hitchcock of any of his movies, at least of the ones that I've seen. There's so much in there, just so much, so many hallmarks. Like there's a little bit of horror, there's a little bit of mystery, there's thriller, there's romance. Like from all the movies that I've seen of him, this movie has like all of those in one. So it really does make use of his talents probably better than I've seen before in any of his films. So I'll say that as well. Um, and yeah, this created almost an entire genre. Just the the guy sitting in his window uh, looking across the street to everybody just kind of doing their thing. And they're, just the way this movie shot is absolutely stunning and breathtaking. I have to imagine when, you, when you're sitting in the theater watching this for the first time, Back in 1954, you had to be absolutely blown away. Like nobody had ever seen anything like this before. I've seen this since in other movies, uh, like Disturbia, like Body Double. I just watched for 1984 month. Absolutely loved that movie. Uh, Voyeurs to an extent, like that one just came out on Amazon Prime. That that definitely wasn't as good good as far as quality. Uh, but yeah, this kind of just created an entire movement, an entire genre of just the, I don't know what you would call it, like the voyeur genre, the guy in his apartment building just kind of spying and peeking in on everybody else. But I like the way that G that Jimmy Stewart is portrayed in this movie. Uh, the way that he's spying on everybody doesn't feel like it's creepy at all. It's just like he's just, just, he's just sitting there. He doesn't have anything else to do, so he's just like looking at everybody across the street. It's almost out of boredom. It's not out of him being uh, a creep or anything like that, as I feel like it is in some of the other movies. It's just out of plain boredom. He's just kind of looking across the street. He's looking at the, the bombshell girl bending over right in front of him. And it, to be honest, he looks unimpressed. Like he's, you know, he's not even really reacting to that. Um, you know, you got the newlywed couple. You got all kinds of stuff going on. I just love the way this movie is shot. It's so creative. It just kind of just pans around. And it takes its time is what I appreciate about it most. Like it's just slow painting around and it's not boring. Like it's interesting and it's captivating the entire time because you have all these little like sub stories going on, but you're not really getting context 
you're getting the context through him and his interpretation um, of what's going on across the way. And then, of course, you had the big uh, moments where, you know, he thinks somebody got murdered across the street. A man killed his wife, and he's trying to figure that out. But yeah, I'd say out of all the movies I've seen of this type, the man just isolated, looking in on other people, I'd say this is definitely the most well done, which, you know, it's the first. So um, it, that kind of makes sense. But just the, it's because the way of James Stewart and just how he sells it, he sells everything. Just his reaction to everything that's going on is so on point, just feels so real and realistic. Um, that, you know, you just can't help but buy into everything that's going on. You just can't help but be into everything. Like, it's just so engaging. James Stewart is, is definitely becoming just one of my favorite actors. And I know that he's probably on everybody else's, like, top actors. But I feel like I'm just discovering his greatness now because I just watched Man Shot, Liberty Valance, It's a Wonderful Time, what, Life Not Too Long Ago. So... I'm just now enjoying James Stewart in this way, and I have to say, he's just, he's absolutely, he's on another level in this movie. I absolutely love him in this movie. It's LB uh, Jeffries is his name. You know, he's a, he's a photographer, like he's been in war, like he's been through some stuff. Um, so you can just tell that this is killing him to not be able to walk, uh, to be stuck in this wheelchair, and he has nothing else to do. Like I said, but just, but just sit there and just peer around at everybody else, and then he kind of gets caught up in this whole uh, murder investigation and everything because he thinks somebody's being murdered. So, um, yeah, so the direction, top tier. This is just definitely the best uh, Hitchcock has ever been as far as directing-wise, to me, again, of what I've seen. I feel like I have to keep saying that, but um, it's absolutely phenomenal direction. Like, I just, I love movies like this that just take place in one spot. And I just, I love the way that everything is just framed. It's like you don't, you get to peer just a little bit. I love that alley shot, how they keep going to the alley. Um, like they'll pan over from the apartment buildings and everybody in the window. I just love this whole setup, this whole courtyard setup. I have to talk about this for a second. But the way that they pan over and you can see a little bit of the streets. You can see just a little bit of the street. You can see people walking back and forth. Just enough that you know there's a whole world out there. And there's just all kinds of stuff going on. But we don't get any of that. We only get from inside the courtyard from James Stewart's perspective. And I just love that. It's so... Uh, it's so interesting. It's just so incredibly interesting. So I just love the way uh, that all that was laid out. So we got to talk about Grace Kelly for a second. I'm I, I'm absolutely in love with Grace Kelly. I'm going to be honest. Ever since I watched To Catch a Thief, like she was the biggest part of me really loving that movie. Um, she is so good though. Just beyond her looks, being absolutely gorgeous. She's so good in this movie. She is so charming, so charismatic. It is. It's such a shame that she quit acting. Uh, to become a princess, I think, like, in, in the mid-50s, just as her career was really starting to take off. Because I can only imagine what she would have done. She's only, like, 23 or 24 in this movie. But she is she is so good. Just from the second, Hitchcock knows, he knows exactly what he has in this actress. When she gets just her first appearance, like, you see that the, the, the camera is just directly on her. She's coming into... Uh, into Jimmy Stewart's focus there, into his viewpoint um, as he's waking up, and just the picture of her face uh, coming in at him, just so well, so so well shot, so well lit, like it's just perfectly highlighting all of her incredible, uh, you know, beauty and, and, and features, facial features. It's such a great shot, and when she first comes into this, and it's just like, okay, Grace Kelly's here. Let's go. Like, that's what it feels like. But, um, yeah, she's just it's an absolute star. Her and J Jimmy Stewart have such great chemistry. And it, it does feel a little bit where I always find it a little bit odd when you have these movies where, you know, the gap between the, uh, the romantic relationship is like 25 years, which she was like 23, 24, and, and Jimmy Stewart was like 46, 47 um, in this movie. So that feels a little off that she would be so into him. But, my God, is she into him? Like, she's... I don't understand, like, and that's another thing that, um, again, I'm not going to say it got on my nerves because it was a part of uh, his character, um, but, like, she was all over him in this movie, and, like, he was not giving her the time of day <laughs> at all, and it's like, how could you resist Grace Kelly? This is ridiculous. Uh, it didn't feel realistic in that sense, but, again, it was a part of his character trait, you know, um, which, you know, again, I just love all the, you have the personal stuff with him going on in his personal life and his relationship in addition to all this interesting stuff that's going on outside of the apartment. Um, and it just really adds a lot of layers to the story and the characters. And that's something I, I definitely enjoy because he is a guy that feels like he's kind of been a loner his whole life and he doesn't really know how to accept love. Like he even talks about that in the beginning when he's talking to us. I don't know if uh, uh, she's his nurse, but played by Thelma Ritter, who's absolutely fantastic in this movie as well. She provides a lot of energy and laughs um, and exposition. 
for Stute's character, kind of how she lays it out with him. And you kind of get a sense for who this guy is. Um, he's kind of like, look, I don't care. Yeah, she's beautiful. She's all this, but it's not, it's not interesting enough for me. It's not interesting enough for, uh, the way I live my life and my lifestyle. I just don't know if I, if I need all that in my life, all that glamour and glitz. Cause she's like a model and everything as well. Uh, which is definitely interesting. It's just, it, it makes his character just so much more, uh, interesting than it would have been otherwise of it. If it had just been a situation where he's like, yeah, I got a hot girlfriend that comes over and, you know, we're really into each other. It just adds a lot of layers um, to the story. So I'm trying to think of other things I want to say about it. The music in this movie is absolutely phenomenal. I love the music. So yeah, I, I just really love this movie. I really loved it a lot. Um, but I'm going to get into a little bit of the negative. So as this story starts to develop, as this mystery starts to develop, it starts to, to go into some directions where you're like, okay, I kind of am figuring out what's going on, but I know that Hitchcock's going to throw something in uh, else at me. Uh, it's going to be a moment where, you know, we realize that Norman Bates was dressed up like his mother all along. It's going to be like one of those situations. But by the time we get to the end, it all just kind of goes in the direction that you thought it was going to go in the whole time or that you suspected it was going. And it doesn't really do anything to, to subvert your expectations or shock you, but that I can't, it's hard to say it's a negative. This is a 70 year old movie. It's like this was for the time I had to imagine just a groundbreaking film and just everything else that I was doing. And I only feel this way because I've seen 70 years of cinema and movies and TV shows where they're trying to do that kind of stuff and really just try to change the flip the script on all the classic films that came before. So it's hard to really knock it for that. But that's the only thing I'll say is it sets up all this mystery and, and stuff like that. And it doesn't really deliver in any kind of shocking um, or impactful way. It's just like, okay, it, it was pretty much what I thought it was going to be uh, the whole time. So that's what, that's one thing that I'll say about it. Of course, you can read into it a, a little bit uh, and, you know, have different interpretations of what the ending actually meant. But um, so yeah, it, just not as satisfying, I guess, is why I'll end up marking it down just, just a tiny bit. And there's some, there's some weird like editing choices. I know it kind of goes into, uh, just the way that Hitchcock uh, chose to shoot. Like, there's a the sequence at the end where he falls out of the window looks extremely goofy and dated. But I understand, like, it's, it, again, it's in the 50s, showing somebody fall. Like, it just wasn't an easy thing to shoot, I imagine, back then. You couldn't really fake that kind of thing and make it look as realistic as you can now. So... Um, so I, I get it, but again, it just doesn't look the best. It looks extremely good when he's like falling just the way the camera and everybody's running out like super, like almost like he speeds up the film, uh, a little bit. So all that kind of felt, uh, a little awkward, not really necessary. So, but at the end of the day, guys, I, I really love this movie. I'll give it a 4.5 out of a five for the actual movie. It, it, it is possible. I watched this a couple more times. It might move up to be a perfect movie for me, but as of right now, I'm going to give it a 4.5 out of five on Letterboxd. Really enjoyed it. So. Let's get into the to the uh, to the the visuals of this. The 4K visuals. Did the 4K visuals deliver? So all of these in this set, I will say, if you have not picked up this Hitchcock collection, I think it's like fifty four dollars on Amazon right now. I'll link it down below. It's a phenomenal set, absolutely phenomenal set. Psycho looks fantastic. The birds looks fantastic. Of course, they re they re released all these individually, uh, but you're going to pay a little bit more. Uh, to get them all individually, but it's a fantastic, everything, every movie on here looks amazing. This one though, what I will say it is, um, it's not as vibrant as some of his other films, just in the, the, uh, you know, overall aesthetic of the apartment buildings. Everything's like real, the real dull colors, like all browns and just, uh, you know, bland greens and stuff like that. Like it's not, it's just not the most um, yeah, colorful or vibrant as far as, so you, when you see the HDR, it doesn't really pop like it does in something like Vertigo looked outstanding, like out of this world with some of the visuals in that movie. This one is just very dull. Um, but you do notice some great detail. Like I said, when Grace Kelly first reveals herself, she's zooming in like the facial details. Fantastic. Some of the facial shots of Jimmy Stewart when he's holding that telescope is absolutely uh, absolutely fantastic. Just so detailed. So there are some shots in here that are a little questionable. Like they didn't, uh, they didn't completely complete the transfer. Um, they just don't look the best, but some shots look absolutely breathtaking. So overall I'll give this transfer high marks. I think it's a really solid one, but I will say of all of these, it might be the weakest one for me as far as the transfer. But again, that's just my perspective in the way that I saw it. So um, getting into the uh, special features, there's some great special features on here, but they are all uh, legacy special features. So I did watch the 
rear window ethics and original documentary and that one looked just of the quality of it it looked like it was from a previous dvd release but i watched about half of that going into the making of rear window just some really interesting fascinating stuff i think you got hitchcock's daughter in there talking about the legacy of the film so some really good stuff in there you also get a conversation with the screenwriter john michael hayes you get pure cinema through the eyes of the master um so that one the pure cinema that's kind of like an overall of all of his um, of all of his movies. And I feel like that was on the psycho one as well. Uh, it felt like I had watched it before. Like it felt like, cause I remember watching special features of some of these other ones. It felt like it was on different movies, but again, that's just kind of like an overview of all of his films. So there's some really good special features just overall in this entire set. There's some, there's some really great stuff. So highly recommend this set highly recommend if you haven't seen rear window, like if you like films, like Disturbia with Shia LaBeouf, more recently Voyeurs, uh, Lady in the Window, or whatever it's called, the Netflix stuff. Uh, far inferior movies than, than this one. Body Double uh, is absolutely amazing. If you like films like that and you have not seen Rear Window, you have to go back and see where all of this came from. Because it definitely, uh, not only is it the originator of this concept, but it does it the best of all the ones that I've seen. So that is my review for Rear Window from 1954. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said in the opening, we are going to be diving into a, a many Hitchcock films this month. So expect a lot of Hitchcock reviews this month on the channel for a month of Hitchcock. But again, appreciate you all watching. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below your thoughts on Rear Window, turn on those bell notifications and follow me on all my social media accounts. Those links are in the description and we'll see you next time.